Okay, good morning, everyone. Morning. morning. <clears throat> so, uh, we're a little cozy here, <laughs> our two commissions. We're gonna be conducting a joint commission meeting with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission to discuss topics of mutual interest to our agencies. In recent years, uh, I believe we've been having joint meetings between our commissions about every two years. Uh, the last one occurred, I think, just before I came on the commission. So I'm looking very much forward to today's presentations and discussion. Um, I'd like to welcome Chairman LaFleur and the, her fellow commissioners to the NRC. Uh, we have, our two agencies have an existing memorandum of understanding that facilitates interactions between our agencies on matters where we have mutual interest pertaining to the nation's uh, electric power grid reliability, including cybersecurity related issues. We have a very full agenda today. We're gonna to have several topics to discuss and we're gonna have a luncheon and a tour of the NRC Operations Center, the brand new NRC Operations Center. I was just down there yesterday. It is, again, it's very nice, you'll like it. Um, the first part of the meeting is open and is gonna focus on grid reliability, nuclear power plant license renewals and dam safety. <coughs> And the second part of the meeting will be closed to the public. And for that, that portion of the meeting, we're gonna relocate to the second floor of this building. So we'll take a little break to do that. On the agenda for the first part of the meeting related to grid reliability, we're gonna be hearing from Mr. Tom Thomas Burgess from the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, Mr. J. Arnold Quinn from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, Mr. Bill Allerton, uh, from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and Mr. Brian Smith from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. For the second topic, oops, that was the second, for the second topic on dam safety, we're gonna have Mr. Allerton and Mr. Smith. So we're gonna conduct a question and answer session after each topic. Uh, let me ask Chairman LaFleur if she has any opening remarks. Well, thank you very much, Chairman McFarlane, and thank you for hosting us. It's wonderful to be here, meet so many folks from the NRC, and I'm happy to have a lot of FERC staff here with us. Um, it's very important for us at FERC to have strong relationships with other agencies at the federal and state level that regulate the same companies we do or other aspects of the same work that we do, and that's particularly true of the NRC with our longstanding MOU. Um, meeting today focuses on several aspects of mutual interest. I particularly am interested in a report on the state of the nuclear fleet, current and future. Um, we've been talking about that actually quite a bit at our recent, our own open meetings because the fleet accounts for 20% of our electric um, generation resource mix in the country, very important to reliability. It's more than half of the carbon free generation in the country. So we're very interested in all the things that both of us do that affect the um, the long-term vitality of that resource. So happy to be here. Great. Would any of my fellow commissioners like to make any opening remarks? Just briefly, Chairman, I just want to welcome our uh, commission colleagues and Chairman LaFleur here as well. As she has noted, uh, this is not only an acknowledgement of our longstanding and close working relationship, but I think it's very timely as well. I look forward to today's presentations and welcome. Yeah, I join my fellow commissioners in welcoming you here. Uh, I think the idea of us meeting periodically is a great one. I would also like to welcome the staff members from both FERC and NERC, who will give us presentations on issues of mutual interest, and I'm looking forward to our discussions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'd like to also add my welcomes to um, Chairman LaFleur and the other commissioners. Um, it's our turn to host you. I, sorry we don't have the space that you do in your <laughs> facility, but uh, we do make do. Um, and uh, I'll, like, again, I'd also like to uh, welcome the staff of uh, FERC and NERC. And uh, I wanted to also have a special shout out to our Office of Secretary Rochelle and, um, and, and her folks for uh, working so hard to pull this together. I know this was a big effort, so good work and thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks for coming. This relationship between our two agencies is very important, and I think this is a really uh, timely meeting. Thank you. Would any of like the FERC commissioners like to make any of opening course. remarks? 
course. Well, thank you again for having us. These are not only helpful because we get a chance to talk to each other and develop the relationships, but I also think it forces the staffs to work together, and sometimes that's even more beneficial than actually the public meeting. So again, thank you for your hospitality. There you go. Great to be here. Thanks for hosting us. Look forward to our conversation. Uh, good morning, and thanks for the uh, the invitation to be here. Um, I understand I'm in Rochelle's chair. Someone already told me that. So thanks for uh, borrowing, <laughs> letting me borrow your uh, usual spot. Um, it. Uh, I'm the newest to the commission, so this is my first one of these that I've had an opportunity to attend. I think the last one was maybe after I was confirmed, but literally days before I took office, so I've been in a full two years. But uh, thanks for the, uh, uh, the use of your space and look forward to a good meeting. Great, thank you. Okay, I think we're going to turn to our first topic right now, which is grid reliability, markets, and extended loss of all AC power. So I'm going to turn over to Mr. Burgess from the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. Much, and uh, it's, a it's really a pleasure to be here, and uh, Chairman of the NRC and Commissioners, Chairman of the FERC and Commissioners, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Tom Burgess, I'm the Vice President of Reliability Assessments and Performance Analysis. And in that uh, capacity, we oversee the development of uh, reliability assessments and, and uh, gauge the performance of the uh, reliability performance of the bulk power system. So what I'd like to do today is provide you with a brief overview of the uh, report which summarizes the, what we refer to as the state of reliability. That is our premier report which describes the behavior, the reliability uh, characteristics of the bulk power system over the prior uh, year. Uh, that report contains key findings, uh, and it's based on a solid technical framework that uh, arises from merging data analysis, event ana evaluations, root cause uh, reviews, and represents an integrated review uh, of reliability. Next slide, please. We should be having slides. There we go. Um, so it's an independent review uh, of performance. It attempts to identify trends and issues that potentially raise risks for uh, the bulk power system reliability. Uh, we use that to formulate recommendations and uh, use that as a risk basis to provide recommendations to what we refer to as the Reliability Issues Steering Committee, uh, which ranks and prioritizes the efforts that we undertake to improve and enhance reliability. It is an input stream to the development of standards, the most important standards that we want to pursue. Uh, an initiative that we've undertaken, which is referred to as the Reliability Assurance Initiative, which is also a risk-based approach to uh, assuring reliability. And ultimately, it merges the concepts of event analysis, reliability assessment, and uh, even the cyber uh, environment. By providing an advanced indication or identification of trends and emerging potential risks, we believe that we can get in front of those risks and initiate actions that can help alleviate the effects of those uh, uh, risks or lessen the severity of those um, conditions. Uh, next slide, please. The first key finding is that uh, the bulk power system has a sustained high performance level. Um, this chart is a uh, composite index chart which is comprised of all the days of the year sorted uh, uh, from the highest to lowest uh, in terms of severity. The severity is, a, is an index comprised of, of uh, transmission loss, generation loss, and load loss. Uh, and so that severity risk for every day of the year then is uh, charted and we can do a year-by-year -year comparison of the performance of the bulk power system on those measures. Uh, in 13, our performance was as good as it's ever been in the years that we've been measuring uh, reliability performance. Um, and so that is a, uh, a good measure. Second thing is that we also track in the uh, small box there, we track the high stress days which are occurring on the grid. And uh, in this case, we had uh, no high stress days that exceeded five on our index. 
AC transmission circuit availability remains very high at uh, over 97%, and AC transmission transformer uh, availability remains high at over 98%. So all in all, good performance on the bulk power system. Next slide, please. We also monitor frequency response. Frequency response is a, a, is a very important measure that allows us to understand the behavior of bulk power system uh, generators. And we're observing steady frequency response across all of the four interconnections that we monitor. Uh, the Eastern interconnection has a slight downward trend, and, uh, but it is not statistically significant. So this is an area where we want to continue to monitor the activity and the behavior in the Eastern interconnection. We've also shown uh, on these charts of the various interconnections an interconnection frequency response obligation for each interconnection. Uh, and there are some instances where the, um, the behavior has fallen below that interconnection frequency response. And so those are areas that we're going to continue to investigate and try to understand common threads, common trends, common <coughs> modes that we may be able to act upon. Uh, a couple of pointers is that we have initiated, uh, we've, we've received approval on BAL3, it's a, it's a frequency response standard, uh, which sets minimum frequency response obligation, and it allows for uniform calculation of frequency uh, response or frequency bias. And so that is uh, beginning to emerge. Uh, one point to, to note is that currently uh, Texas has probably the largest uh, concentration of variable energy resources in the mix, and uh, that gives rise to some of the, um, of the dispersion in the data points there. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. What we have uh, provided here is, uh, I want to talk about two key findings that we've observed. One is uh, protection system misoperations and uh, failed AC substation equipment. With respect to misoperations, these, uh, are, these cause more severe transmission events than otherwise would be the case. There's a significant probability of their occurrence, and they are correlated with transmission severity. So the lines to the right have a high correlation with transmission severity. There's about 2,000 operations per year and an average 10% misoperation rate. Uh, however, that ranges in some regions from as low as 5%, which is a good performance rate, to 16%. So uh, the root causes that we've identified have to do with settings, logic, and design, uh, have to do, secondly, with communication failures, and thirdly, with relay failures themselves. Uh, this information comes to us from a series of different databases that we've analyzed. Um, we have a database on misoperations themselves and the mitigation steps that are being uh, implemented. We have a transmission availability data system database, which is applicable to 200 kV and above uh, assets. And then we have events analysis work that uh, indicates that approximately 40 to 50 percent of all the system events that occur have some involvement in uh, misoperations. So this is a priority that's been identified by the risk committee. We do have reliability standards that are underway to try to help address this, and we have a close working coordination effort with the North American Transmission Forum to try to identify the three root causes and what we might do about uh, addressing them. Next slide, please. With respect to uh, the other high correlation to transmission severity item, uh, which is transmission system uh, or substation equipment failures. Um, we have formulated, uh, we've identified this, we've put together a task force to try to validate the findings and identify root cause, formulate some recommendations and solutions. Uh, we anticipate that they would be producing this report by the end of this year in December of 14. Um, we have seen some improvement in uh, a particular metric that we have managed, uh, that we have been monitoring. 
And I'd like to uh, highlight one instance where we have identified a root cause, we have initiated some action, and that has to do with 345 kV SF6 puffer breakers. And we've identified a failure trend and initiated an, a level one alert. Uh, there's about a thousand breakers across the system which uh, are uh, of this type and we've collaborated with the North American Transmission Forum and we have um, gone in and done maintenance activities and since that service alert we have not encountered uh, any further uh, of these type of failures. So we'll be continuing to monitor that to make sure that, the, that that alert is effective. Next slide, please. The final key finding that we have identified as, is that the use of EEA level three have begun to decline. And that's a good, that's a good news story. Um, EEA threes are those um, where firm load shed is imminent or in progress to, to preserve reliability of the local area. Um, oftentimes this is an issue with real-time adequacy, whether that be fuel s supply, generation supply, or on the transmission system. Uh, there were only seven in, in uh, 2013, and only one of those was involved with uh, actual load shed. <coughs> we also monitored other types of load shed, eight load sheds that were uh, used to mitigate actual or post-contingency uh, post transmission systems. All of those were less than 300 megawatts, and only, uh, uh, only one exceeded four hours. So we're going to continue to monitor this. This is a, a, a good news story and less um, uh, EEA 3s being required. Last slide. So just to summarize, uh, these findings and these trends are used to uh, integrate with risk control projects, uh, to refine our, our uh, security metrics, uh, and address integrating variable resources and a historic change in uh, the resource mix. Um, we use uh, event analysis, actual event analysis, and root cause analysis to make sure that we are uh, properly reviewing and evaluating our data. And so with that, I would be welcome to consider any questions. Great, great, thank you very much. All right, uh, I'm gonna start off in, with a really, with a quick question. As a result of the Fukushima accident in Japan, we have asked our power plants to install additional backup systems to provide AC power in the event of loss of offsite AC power. And they're doing so, but I'm interested in whether you guys track whether uh, or how well restoration of power after loss of power is done. Um, uh, restoration and recovery is an important area that we have, uh, we have done a number of activities on. Uh, one of those had to do with a GRIDX2 event that we um, convened last fall, uh, really to test the system to breaking and then and engage both our prep preparedness, our communications, and then our recovery steps that occur beyond that. Um, that's an, actually having a metric, though, on the actual conditions, the actual restoration in the system, we do, we do not have currently that kind of a metric. That's probably something that we should investigate. Yeah, it would be helpful, especially for those of us who live in this area and constantly lose power and don't get it restored for a week or more. It's a personal interest.